Hey guys, Stilter here, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Before we start off with the game, reminder that tonight is Patreon night. Tonight is Friday the 22nd of February, and I'll be there playing with the Patreons. So this is Patreons of Major and Up. So if you want to be joining that, then please become a Patron down below through the link in the description. Anyway, as for this tactical, we're looking at Weiss Schnee down here. He is using a Eurocore deck, and specifically a Eurocore armored deck. So he's going with the Eurocore tanks, and as opposed to what you normally see, he's not going with the Leopard 2A5. He's going with the Leclerc. Leclerc is, or at least used to be, one of my favorite tanks. Especially early on in the history of Wargame Red Dragon, it was very, very powerful. They changed the specs over the years, but it is still a very good tank. Doesn't have the best armor, doesn't have the best AP, but it does have a very high rate of fire. And that rate of fire makes up for the other two elements that are, well, or can be slightly lacking. Now, of course, if you're bringing in a super heavy, the enemy team is going to see that as a massive threat, as well as a nice target for their anti GM planes. So in order to keep it safe, he has a Fleckpanzer Gepard A2 and a Roland 3, both at what I think is going to be the highest possible veterancy for him here. And there's, of course, the Leclerc at Elite. A couple of mortars, maybe to support him, although based on what he wrote in the description of the replay, I don't know if he was actually communicating with this guy. Uh, this is... I can barely see it. Bryant. Bryant also has a second stack of mortars. So he's bringing in seven mortars in total. We have a couple of supporting units. Um, interesting to see a Perret over here. That's not something I would... Well, that's not entirely true. It's a very good unit in long-range engagements. It's also very expensive. Its accuracy, base accuracy that is, is very good. But I would expect to see it at higher veterancy if you're going to be using it. But then again, I guess not everybody has gotten the memo yet of bringing in elite veterancy units. Now, the Leclerc. It's finally here, and it's rolling up right side by side with a Martyr. Uh, that is a Martyr Roland 3, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry, an AMX Roland 3. Let's pull up the specs. 165 point tank. Um, I believe that this went up from 160, um, eventually, or at some point it might have been 170, I'm not sure. This thing kept bouncing around a little. 21 frontal armor, 22% or 22 points of AP, 70% accuracy. And the beauty of it is, that is permanent. Whether you're sitting still, moving, it doesn't matter with this tank. And note the rate of fire at 12 rounds a minute. That is some of the best rate of fire that the game can see tanks wise. Now there is of course one problem with this tank. It doesn't carry a lot of ammo. It carries 22 rounds. If you are going to be using this a lot then it will well, pretty much guaranteed run out of ammo. We did see a lot of stuff come in here. Um, as I was zoomed in so far I couldn't quite make out what exactly we were dealing with and that at the moment seems to be the problem until uh, Blavini over here on the right drops off his reconnaissance unit. Until that time, we don't really know what's where, and especially what threat is inbound. Because there are bound to be threats, we just, well, we just need a bit more intel. He's using the Bedouins, transported by the Remreki. Uh, I believe that this is also the guy with the Perret. He has the Zelda, another Zelda, so he also has HGM teams in here. Interesting to see the amount of transports over here. There's a T-72BU coming his way. That, for a Leclerc, could be a pretty difficult target. It's not impossible, and the T-72BU is already taking quite a bit of fire. 22 frontal armor, so the Leclerc will pen that. But the BU has more frontal armor, or, or sorry, has more pen. So it will do more damage every time it fires at the Leclerc. It is fortunately panicked, and he adequately spots this as the opportune moment to strike. Look at that, Dorban LR firing, the Leclerc is firing, and the Leclerc takes the kill. That's 175 points super heavy out of the game. That's pretty much one player out of the game, because it's going to take him or her, but well, let's assume it's a him, a very long time before he's going to be able to get another unit in. 
There's also a BMP 1K command unit coming in. The hell? Yeah, goodbye. That's the Leclerc. One shot. Target down. So Leclerc, with assistance from others, to be sure, killed off a 175 point and 130. That's 300 points killed. For a 165 point unit, that is a very good return on investment. The next Super Heavy is already presenting itself in the form of the M921 Vihor. Unfortunately, we can't quite see it. And even if we could see it, the Maglans over here on the right flank are not capable of hitting it as they're out of ammo. We do have some other stuff coming in, but can't quite see it. The mortars are definitely putting up a barrage of fire here and getting quite a bit of damage in. At least panic damage or stun damage on units. So that seems to be working out quite well. The question is, can we spot a little bit more over here? Antares is bringing in a VLRA. Interesting to see that this town is empty, by the way. That's That can be a bit of a problem. That is, if somebody actually makes use of that. What you got there? That might very well be the Vihor. From a reject degeneracy. Currently, the Leclerc's holding. <laughs> He's firing missiles from the Milan. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Vihor took a good hit from the Perez there. He's trying to get back into cover, and Perez looks like it lost line of sight. Yeah, the, the uh, Vihor is really not interested in fight. He's trying to pull back, gets killed off by Jaguar. Jaguar gets nailed by the H27M. And that 27M can also pose quite the threat to the Leclerc. It seems like he's coming around trying to get another look at that Leclerc. He's having none of that, so he's pulling back. He's wisely turned off his AA, although... Yeah, there we go, he just turned off the Roland 3. Tank destroyers. 550s. Those are pretty nasty ATGM units. 26 AP. They hit this tank, it's going to really, really hurt. But they seem to be focused on the Ram Reckies for the moment. So that's two of their missiles gone. They carry eight, so they have seven left. And they did just get split up. So I'm assuming that one of them is moving around west and the other one is still over there. They probably saw quite a bit of the firepower coming in from the mortars over here. From Bryant. And were not really interested in uh, having a close look at that. Look at that. 150 points. That was, by the looks of it, one missile from the Roland 3. There goes their seed aircraft. Now, that makes it slightly safer to turn your AA back on, but you never know if they have another one. Pull back, says Samuel G. Supply incoming for you. Thanks, says Blavany. Some wargame players can actually be polite. How about that? In the meanwhile, Leclerc has fired what I believe to be uh, three rounds, guaranteeing two kills. Being the command tank, or the command uh, APC, and the super heavy. Now we're seeing an ATGM standoff between the Pere, who narrowly died to the 550, and as such missed the missile, but not by much. But it was enough. Pere pushes forward, starts to deal with the reconnaissance infantry first, probably looking to get an angle on the 550. 550 gets taken up by the Super Hornet. Good kill. Because now the Leclerc is slightly safer to operate here. Immediately he gets hunted down by the two Yaks, which have been patrolling for quite a while. Now they keep evacing over his lines. But unfortunately there's not too much that his AA can do. And both Yaks make it out. Despite uh, Rafal C1 coming in, or F1, from uh, Antares. There's the HQ7 again. And splash. That's their AA gone. Or at least another AA unit. Okay. I was looking at the minimap and I thought, what the fuck? Why is there a command unit over here? Oh, I don't know. Somebody landed a command unit <laughs> in the back of Bravo. In the far back of Bravo. Anyway, um, at this point I think the Leclerc can be a little bit more aggressive. Yes, we don't know exactly what they have out here yet. But they're not really making that aggressive of a push. And they've been able to kill quite a few units. We know that there's another HGM over there. That's the 550. One of the 550s has been killed. And apparently they have line of sight on both the Dorbin LR and the Leclerc. That is not a good sight. 
because that means that there's a reconnaissance unit quite close. It could be a guy over here, a team in this line here. They might be close enough to spot the tank and the Dorbin LR. These guys have medium stealth, if I'm not... Sorry, very good stealth. So, we're either looking at a reconnaissance team with exceptional optics, or they're exceptionally close. Because spotting these guys in the tree line, that's quite a feat. Now, of course, I could switch it back to neutral, but I want to have a look at the kill list for Weishne at the end of the game, so I can't quite do that. 53G flying over to the right, resupplying probably the Rio, so that the Rio can then keep the Maglans firing. Quite close to the front line there, he passed. Oh, that was weird. Why would you send your 550 forward like that? I think they were trying to get a kill on the Leclerc, or at least a hit. But you were way too close for that. Potato Commander surrenders, as well as Makad. So that's two players gone, that I know of. Bryant pushing forward with a couple of Fuchs, setting up what seems to be a picket line. And at the moment we still don't have reconnaissance over here, nor on the right, because the Maglans are too far back. They are moving forward now, but it's hard to see what the biggest threat to the Leclerc is. He's blind firing at a target. There's another HGM incoming, going directly for the Leclerc. And he just... Yeah, he took that on the rear of the tank. You can see the orientation was to be moving fastest towards this part. And he got shot up in the ass by the HGM. That's really unfortunate. That was a really, really good tank. It's sad to see it go like that. Now, I don't believe that the ZTQ over there is the culprit. I think that there's something else currently doing the spotting. And considering that we got small infrared missiles coming up from over here, and we still don't have a whole lot of reconnaissance. Yeah, it's not these guys. Well, that's one way to get rid of your reconnaissance unit. Just send in the Nighthawk. That should kill them, unless they manage to make it out. Uh, and retreat towards the second tree line there. Now, unfortunately, at this point, um, Weishne doesn't have too many units. He does have his AA. He also has an ATMGM Milan F3 over there, and an AMX-10P, who he's pulling back. Don't pull it back too far, though, because an AMX-10P can still be very, very useful with that autocannon on top of it. Now, I haven't looked into how the left flank is doing, but judging by the minimap, they've been doing quite well. The amount of infantry that they still have is not too high. And it looks like these Gavati won't be coming home. But they have... Oh, damn it. Really? Oh, these guys are probably waiting for supplies. They have quite a few units over here that can be sent forward. His AA is ready. HGM teams are ready, but again, we don't have a spotter. Dornier comes in. That's a rookie Dornier. What are you bringing in? BGS? Yeah. Rookie BGS. Couple of reasons why I don't like those. One. They're only good stealth. Two. They're rookie. Which means far less spotting capacity than normal units. And three. They are dead slow. At 15 kilometers per hour. It's going to take them a long, long time to get to a position. And by the time they get to a position where you encounter fire, they are not very likely to make it out alive. So this is why I personally do not use the BGS or anything similar. They are just, as far as I'm concerned, too slow and simply not good enough. And Blavany is also bringing in a reconnaissance unit. But, oh, you might want to drop those off right about now. Judging by the veterancy, I think these are another... Come on, get out now. That's Maglans. That was Maglans. Oh, that was unfortunate. He could have really used those Maglans on the right. Uh, it looks like the Yaks are still in patrol, but they don't actually have a target. The Nighthawk is coming back in. It's a good thing that those two uh, enemy Yaks just left. 
What are you going to drop on? This group of infantry, I suppose. And here it comes, and he wipes out the friendly Fusiliers. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't think he got a good drop there. I'm not sure if that was his target, but damn. Now they're also making pretty good progress down in the middle. They got a VTT, which was able to push all the way towards the enemy command infantry here. Um, judging by the amount of fire that it's taking, it is not particularly likely to kill it, but at least it's fleeing the... or forcing the unit to flee the zone. This thing is taking a hell of a beating, and it cannot stand up to that for very long. Now I'm seeing another blue blip moving on the map, and that's a Leopard 1A5. I still really like the look of the Leopard. It's... It's such a sleek, nice-looking tank, as far as I'm concerned. And yes, it designed, or it's design changed over the years, but it still has that standard, I don't know, sleek look. When I was still playing World of Tanks and I saw that they were adding this thing, um, I just grinded up to this as fast as I possibly could, and for a long, long time. The Leopard 1, as it was the one in the World of Tanks, not the 1A5, the Leopard 1 was by far my favorite unit. Fast, uh, almost no armor, but you could pop up unexpected, get back into cover, sneak around, and move again. Very, very much my playstyle. Anyway, unfortunately his Milan F3 got wiped out, and it's time to repay the favor with the 1A5. If they can get a good line of sight on these HEGM teams over here, at least one, that is. Come on, get a shot off. 88%, look at that accuracy. There we go, that's one Conqueror's team dead. He pulls back into the forest and just enough for that missile to miss. I don't think they quite have line of sight in the second one, but the Dorban LR do have a good kill shot on the transport that came in. There's the second Conqueror's team. Come on, Leopard, go get him. Faster. If they're on the move, they can't fire at you. The moment they're sitting still, they'll disappear. And there you go, that's another 25 point unit. And with that, those two, D, uh, those two HGM teams, he already got most of the tank refunded. 65 points, killing 50 points, that's a good trade. We're still not done, though. He's been immediately resupplied by the Oshkosh back there, who's also resupplying the uh, Dracon on the other AA that they have. Aha! This is what we were looking for. And there you go, now he's made positive with his tank. This sniper team was able to spot the Leclerc and the Dorbin LR in that tree line. So it was definitely an exceptional stealth sniper team. At this point, the enemy reconnaissance team on the right is still trying to get back. Apparently this is either a new team, or they were able to avoid the Nighthawk strike earlier. At any rate, I don't think... Oh, really? <laughs> don't think so. Uh, Pram decided to fire at the 1A5. 1A5 was having none of that shit. Immediately wiped out the Pram. And now it's going to take out the reconnaissance team, I think. And there we go. Look at this guy go. This is a 65-point tank. 10 frontal armor. 16 AP. So it kicks way above its weight class. Very, very accurate. Um, not as accurate as the Leclerc, to be sure. But still a very, very handy tank to have around a situation where the enemy is just sending in transports. And not too much else. Now, I did see a helicopter fly off to the side here, so it's time to bring up your AA and get ready for a fight. And also, we need more reconnaissance. At some point, I think last week, somebody asked me, how much reconnaissance do I need? Um, I'd say there's no such thing as having too much reconnaissance. Of course, you need to balance it out with the fact that you still need to kill stuff. But other than that, you just need information on what the enemy's doing. And with that information, you can then calculate a strategy or come up with a counter, a unit that you need to bring in. No info, no counter, loss. Do we want a perfect HGM vehicle or a chopper? Um, at this point, I'd say maybe not so much a chopper, because there is an M90 over there. Show it a chopper, and it will show the chopper the ground very, very quickly. So I don't think that that's going to be an ideal unit to bring in. One combination that I haven't quite tried yet in tactical is um, 
bringing in the Yasur Nimrod with the Maglines inside and having both of those at Elite. I think that you can get that done. I just haven't tried that combination yet because that would be very expensive. But it would also get you two very powerful anti-tank slash anti-vehicle units. Jesus, he's being really ballsy with this Leopard. I know that a couple of their players left, but still. Oh, hello, Iglas. And goodbye, Iglas. Pulling back. It seems like the enemy MiG 29M. Or what was it? MiG 29M? No, the SU 27M. I don't know if it's been shot down over on the left. At least it hasn't been shot down over on the right. That much is certain. Look how far this M325 can go. And yes, it has bad optics. So the moment that you spot something is when you get shot at. Usually, unless it's a very, very sneaky shooter. But we do have a potential reconnaissance team sitting over there. Time to bring back the Leopard. Also a couple of Heimatschützen, which again is reservists. And finally, a good reconnaissance team, the Maglan. Also, the BGS, and again, the problem with the BGS is that they're too fucking slow. They're probably limping back to get supplies, but at that point the supplies are just moving out ahead of them. Not very handy. <laughs> There's a Tatra transport. Easy kill, but maybe not the priority. How did you not hit that? You were hitting stuff at max range and something in front of you you can't hit. Interesting. He's also putting up a ton of a smoke screen here. And that's, I suppose, Bryant. That's not exactly what the Leopard 1A5 needs at this point. Um, I'd say if there was a Super Heavy in here, he would have noticed. Because the Super Heavy would have come out to play. It would have come out to kill the Leopard 2A or 1A5. And as such... I suppose you can guarantee that there is no threat to the Leopard 1A5 in the form of a Super Heavy. There could be infantry still hiding in there, and one good AT weapon into the side, or potentially even the front of a Leopard 1A5, and you're done. But it is not really too handy to have a smokescreen over here right now. A CM1... Hold on. These are very rare. A CM170... Who the fuck is bringing in CM-170s? This is a really, really old bird. It has two... Longer-ish range ATGMs. With atrocious accuracy. And pretty bad AP. On top of that, it has zero ECM. Its airspeed is only 600. It has no uh, air-to-ground capacity other than those ATGMs. It doesn't have any air-to-air -air missiles to defend itself. And it's a rookie. Really? And somehow... All... What was that? Air-to-air? Ground-to-air? I think ground-to-air. All ground-to-air missed. Wow. Okay. I hope they can kill that thing, because that does, does not deserve to be in tactical. I'm sure if the enemy is using it, perfectly fine. Also, what's this blue blip back here? Ah, it's an AMX-10P. Um, you could have used this. The AMX-10P would be a very handy companion to the Leopard 1A5. Because with it, <coughs> you can have the main gun from the 1A5. And that auto cannon from the AMX-10P. So bring this. Especially if you have, for example, um, your Leopard over here. And you want to cross that river. That's something that the Amex 10P can do. Now, to be fair, um, in his description of his replay, Weishne said that this is his first attempt at 10v10 tactical. If this is his first attempt, then he's doing a hell of a job. Currently, he has 740 points, which is the leading position in his team. And yes, I know a leopard or a leopard, an armored deck usually gets quite a few points. Sometimes it steals kills. Um, and the operation of an armored deck is made possible simply by friendlies. You need allies to make this thing work. 
If you don't have allies to spot for you, to provide AA, to provide resupplies, infantry, then an armored deck is really not that handy in tactical. It's big, unwieldy, and uh, you have to be fucking shitting me. Really? That's a Rafal. That's an elite Rafal. Missing two missiles against a plane that has zero ECM. What? Okay. Well, anyway, the Yaks have been getting quite aggressive in their push. And they have just come to regret that. Because both Yaks have been shot down. One got killed by Vaishne and the other one got killed by the Dracon over here. So that should wipe out any air power that Red 4 still fielded, or at least air to air. What? What? This is the same guy. I know he's shaken. But even a shaken Rafal with a 65% base accuracy would still probably have an accuracy of 60, maybe 50%. This guy is just trolling everybody. What the hell? And his problem is not so much that he ran out of missiles. He ran out of fuel. <laughs> because the CM-170 only has a time over target of 60 seconds. So if this was a bait, if this was a plane that they sent in solely to get the um, Rafal to come out and play, then that worked perfectly and good play to them. But if that thing was actually making an attack run on armor, then no. T-72S engaging an M48A2 G2 with a sphere. Not quite getting a line of sight on it. The fact that we can see it and it's not able to get an ATGM off means that they don't have a lot of reconnaissance over here. But pushing a 1A5 against the T-72S is risky. Because this thing has 20 AP, 18 frontal armor. Meaning, you will not go through its frontal armor. Side armor is only 8. So if you get close enough, you can and definitely will penetrate that amount of armor. But you need to get there. And a Leopard 1A5 is not a particularly stealthy vehicle. But look at this guy, he's just rushing in. And so much as a Leopard can rush across open field. But at 65, and what? Just like that. CT-72S, drive to the side, shoot it in the side, win. <laughs> There's another unit dead. Uh, 1,015 points. What the hell? Have I been playing this game wrong all this time? Or is he just really, really fortunate with his 1A5? Now, at this point, he's just trying to see who can get the most points. Who can get the most kills in the, short uh, in the shortest possible period of time? And they're just wiping out CVs as quickly as they can. So this game is pretty much done. So let's speed up the last couple of kills in the game. Uh, oh, he's buying a 2A5. It's a bit late. There's a CV dead. Not his doing, I think. And there we go. Game over. That was a good game. If this was his first tactical, then he did a hell of a job. 1,015 points, 285 points on losses, 165 points of which was the Leclerc. And what was the rest then? The HGM team? Oh, your resupply chopper and the Roland 3. So I guess he, t yeah, he mentioned that in the description. He didn't turn it off in time and the Cedar craft still got the better of him. Now, you'd think that the Leclerc was able to do the most damage, but the 1A5 got most of the kills. Doesn't make the Leclerc um, useless in this match. Not at all. Because by wiping out the T-72BU and the BMP-1K and getting support from the Maglans, he was able to just completely eradicate the biggest threat in that flank with the Leclerc, allowing the Leopard to then follow up and do all this damage. Gepard got a kill on the Yak-141. Uh, the Roland killed off a seed aircraft, of all things. I must have missed that part. A couple of losses here and there, but nothing too severe. All right. Um, he also sent me his deck code. I'm curious what exactly he is using, so let's have a look. Import it and paste it there. 
quick name and here we go. Yeah, so he has two Leclerc's at Elite. He has one Elite 2A5, uh, Elite 2A4s, Elite 1A5s, and Elite Brennis. I like him already for bringing only Elite units. HGM Milan F3, um, six of these. I would take four, simply because they are going to be more accurate. Fliegerfausts, four, highest veteran C, four, and eight at veteran. With the Martyr 2. This map didn't particularly call for Martyr 2s, but they could still be very handy in suppressing enemy infantry, especially with that range of 1925. Very good against reconnaissance teams. Logistics, um, standard CV, command tank. So you could argue that you bring in this command tank at veteran. But if you do that, then starting the game, you're already 60 or even 70 points down. Which means that, well, you probably won't be able to afford a super heavy and get some support of your own. Recon's a bit weak, so he's definitely relying on reconnaissance from other players. Just a Leopard 1A1. Uh, medium stealth on that. That's pretty much the best fast reconnaissance that you can get. Um, yeah, the Hussars are not great. The BGS are terrible. Look at that, 12 rookies are A trained. Joy. I'd say the best possible recon option that you can get with your deck is going to be the Commandos Para. Having a squad like these can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy infantry, spot them, um, and passively provide reconnaissance for any of the heavy armor that you bring in. Vehicle support, uh, Jack 2 at best veterancy, Mortar VTS 1 best veterancy. Yeah, you don't really need any of these vehicles, but it's nice to have options. Helos, Cassiope, and the Hot 2, and air power, uh, one Rafal at Elite, 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 and. Veteran. Finally somebody listened when I said, get your shit at Elite. Why Schnee did exactly that, and he got all of his units at Elite. Or at least, <laughs> highest veterancy as possible. Anyway, I'll be posting the deck in the description down below in case you want to use this. And if you have something similar where one of your tanks, which doesn't even need to be a super heavy, it can be a slightly inferior tank, like the Leopard 1A5. If you have a unit like that, which you wouldn't necessarily expect to be the star of the show, have something or get results like these, then definitely send me a replay like that. You can find that down in the description below. Also, in the description down below is the link to Patreon in case you still want to join the Patreon night. Um, if you're not able to attend, then there is another one next month. And um, yeah, I think that covers about it. Oh yeah, right, the Discord. If you want to join my Discord, you can do that as well in the link down below. If you're tired of playing with randoms and you want to have some voice comms and some fun with people you can actually talk to. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for more videos.